everybody welcome back to our channel if you're new to the channel this is a rich and jazzy live and today we are doing another mukbang 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 mukbang, mukbang. and we have a delicious spread prepared by richard and i and i'll tell you guys what we're going to be eating before we start talking um today i made a small seat small seafood boil for myself. That's the miniature version, right? Yes, this is the miniature version. It's not the usual big shebang right. that you normally make. Um, because I wasn't able, obviously, to go out to the grocery store, so I used what I had in my freezer. So I have snow crab legs, um, scallops, large jumbo scallops, and some large shrimp. These are not colossal size shrimp, but this is still like a nice large shrimp. I think the bag was jumbo shrimp. We have our boiled eggs and potatoes. We also have our corn uh, we have our beef smoked sausage and richard prepared his cowboy ribeye cowboy ribeye on the bone just on the bone yes amazing and if you're new to the channel we purchased those cowboy ribeyes from sam's club yeah um and best deal in town we can't leave this out we are also eating our meal with the delicious be love sauce. sauce. Smackalicious. The best. Smack oh, it's nice and hot too. It's like burn your fingers off hot. Yes. So we have a lovely, this is the mild version. Um, I love the Be Love sauce. It's so delicious. I actually purchased my um my mom the mild mm -hmm. sauce. So they made a big seafood boil for my sister's birthday. What'd they say? Uh, they loved it. They absolutely, They're hooked, right? they loved it. They really, really did love it. I saw so, the um, the thing that your mom made. She hooked it up. Mm -hmm. And she, she made all. She made Huge a lot. Like a pan, thing. like twice the size. Right. They were eating it for like three days. That's yeah. how much seafood. And it's four of them. So it's like they had a whole bunch of seafood. So Can we go in? Can we go yeah, in? Yes, so Can now it's in? time to start eating. The girls are upstairs. They already had their dinner. And they're just chilling out for the night. Today starts my spring break. Oh wow. Yes, today starts my spring break and we are obviously not going anywhere. Even though you haven't been anywhere in three weeks. <laughs> we are not going anywhere. We had a trip booked, but obviously, well we had a cruise to be more, more, more specific. That's one word I struggle with, specific. <laughs> and um, that was a struggle. Go ahead, yeah, man. that's like one word <laughs> that I struggle with pronouncing. Um, we had a cruise boat, so obviously we're not cruising with this coronavirus going around in the world. We are not cruising. We will be cruising around our house <laughs> from room to room. I think I'm gonna put my bathing suit on. Make me feel special, like I'm at the beach. We need to figure something out. I mean. That's a, that's a big L that happened to us this year. I mean, you just can't predict stuff like that, you know? Yeah, you can't. But the major topic that we're gonna be talking about, and a lot of you guys have been asking, is about finances. And we're gonna eat, and we're gonna talk, and we're gonna try our best to get out as much information as, as possible that we think is good financial, financial advice. advice. In no way, shape, or form, I repeat, in no way, shape, or form are we bankers, accountants, financial advisors. We are not licensed in this field, okay? So don't take our word for as bond, but this is advice that we would give a friend or a family member. Right. And because you guys watch our channel, you guys are our family. So we want to give you the best advice that we think. And it, this is- And this, work, this works for us, so. Uh -huh. So, go ahead, babe. So, you know, we're not multimillionaires because obviously we both would not be going to work. <laughs> so, we think that we're very blessed and we do well with our finances and people have been requesting ultimately a little finance talk. So, we want to talk about it. And you know, for us, we believe when it's time to talk about it, it's time to eat can and please, talk about it. Can you please pass me paper towel? So, Thank so you. let's talk finance, guys. Again, I'm going to keep it very basic. We're not going to go into detail. If you need specific details of anything, you you can hit us up. I can go into debt a little bit more, but 
or you could look it up. You probably would find a lot better information on YouTube from CPAs and finance people. Oh, I left my lemon. Did you oh. really? Yeah. You want me to get it? Yeah, it's right there in the okay. fridge. Okay, I got my lemon. <laughs> Thanks, babe. So, we are obviously, some people are losing their jobs, some people are being furloughed, some people are, they're, they're just, it's, the world is just a crazy place right now. So the people that are still getting paid and being able to work from home, what should they, what do you think would be the best bet for them to do with their paycheck, like right now? So if you got paid today, the first thing we need to think of is, as of today, over 6 million people have filed for unemployment. That's crazy. So, yeah. You got to think of where we are with the coronavirus and a recession, a possible depression in our economy. So, some of the... Sorry, that little piece of steak had me there. <laughs> so, some of the advice you may normally get on an everyday, I, I probably, you know, we have to adjust with the times, right? So we're in, we're in a, a weird, a weird place. No one could predict what's going to happen. Financial planners and advisors cannot predict what's going to happen. They never could, but now more than ever, they cannot predict it because we're in a recession, depression, somewhere in between that because of a virus because of a flu-like virus. So it's it's a strange place. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very strange place. So they can't predict it. It's not like, you know, when the economy crashed because of the banks. Mm -hmm. This is different. If they bail out the banks, if they bail them out, they, it, it doesn't matter. If the virus is still killing everybody, it doesn't matter. So you can't predict, right? So, number one, you get paid today. What should you do? Pay your bills. Let's start there, right? Pay my bills. Mm -hmm. so pay your bills. So I shouldn't like pay my mortgage? I mean, You some. should definitely pay your bills. So, <laughs> some banks, I can tell you right now, are offering where you, if you're affected by coronavirus, you can put your payments off for like three months. Mm -hmm. And you can put those three months, the payments, on the back end of your mortgage. So that may be a good option. And the reason is you can save that money. So what they're going to do is they're not going to report to the credit bureau that you're behind on your payments and That's always a good your thing. credit score is going to drop and this and that. It's not like you just didn't pay it. But so mm -hmm. that's one option to save money. Mm -hmm. Which brings me to my second point is that you need to save money after you pay your bills. Number one is you need to have some money saved. Uh, well, number two. Right. You need to have some money saved because there are, I think they, I think I heard today 700,000 people that may be losing their job. Like, I forgot if it was this week or what the statistic is, but I heard that 700,000 people will be losing their job and that's in the short term. That's crazy. That's They're probably, if the virus keeps going, it'll be more than that. Mm -hmm. So, in anticipation of that, where normally you could be very aggressive in investing and things like that, you need to have money saved money because saved. you need to be prepared if you well, lose your job. Well, how much money saved? Let's say I get paid $1,300 every two weeks. That's what I get, $1,300. That's mm -hmm. not what I get, but I'm just saying. Let's say I get $1,300 every two weeks. So My bills accumulate to about... I, I have to, like, let's say I take... How much do you think was realistic that people would take for a two-week check to put aside for their bills? Because you pay your bills monthly. So, right. a $1,300 check, where well, I should put like $900, $800? Let's just assume that... Let's assume... How about this? Whatever you... What you should do is, first of all, calculate what you pay per month to sustain your normal living, everyday life. Right. Groceries. Right. Hair All the nails. bills, <laughs> hair and nails, if there is Well, you're not getting your you. hair, you're not getting your hair and nail done right you can't now. can't pay for it, right? So, <laughs> like, look at my nails. I know y'all might be looking at my nails right now, they look terrible, okay? <laughs> because, because of that. So, that's one bill, right? But let's say everyday life. 
Normally, she would budget in her nails, she would budget in her hair, all those things, right? What do you need to live every month? Mm -hmm. So, the best goal you can have is to save six months worth. Even if it means that's like... Six months worth of what? Whatever it costs you to sustain. Okay. Right? To live your life almost like if nothing happens. Okay. Six months. That should be your first goal. So if you can, if you can put that away, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000, whatever, it costs you to live six months your normal way. Don't get me wrong. If you lose your job, you're probably not gonna get your hair done every month if you're smart. Or it might be that important to you that you need to get your hair done, right? Right, I, I mean, you know, make it, getting your hair done makes you feel better. You already yeah. lost your job. So it, it, you're it already might, down in the dumps. I would consider that essential because- mm -hmm. um, That is an essential. Mental health is, is important it's too, right? Like number one. So, we're gonna put away some money. And people, like I said, before all this, they might have told you, do this, do this, pay off your debt. So pay off your debt is like number three to me. And a lot of people believe that's number two. Who's got time to pay off their debt? Right, so my <laughs> thing is right now, we are already in trouble in the economy. I would not worry about paying off debt. Mm -hmm. I would save money first. Normally I would say pay off debt, then save money because you're paying interest every month, but right now you just don't know what could happen. I would put away some money mm -hmm. first. So if you put away money, you paid your bills, you, um, what's the third one? But, but let's break it down for the people, babe. Mm -hmm. I get paid $1,300. How much you think I should put in my savings after I put my essentials? Well, it depends. It, you see, that's the thing. I can't give an exact number because it depends on what do you pay in every every month? Maybe right. some people have. Yeah, some people. Have, everybody got different bills. Right. Yeah. So I can't give a real number. All right. You know. Um, I know that might be a question. You know, that's why. Yeah, I, I can't give a number. I can't give a percentage. In a normal everyday life, after we've paid our bills, after we've made sure our savings is straight, because sometimes we take out of our savings to to pay for something, mm -hmm. and I'll replace that when I get paid. It was so good with the eggs. Oh yeah, the egg is slamming with this um, sauce, right? Mm -hmm. So after we've re make sure our savings is where it should be, after we've tried to pay down some debt, I don't, I wouldn't pay down all my debt immediately because I also really believe in investing because um, that could counteract the debt that I have in a yeah. sense. Um, after that, check on the phone there, see what I put in there. Mm -hmm. I wrote some stuff down, so I was trying to make sure that I don't go away from that too far. So what we normally do is we pay off our bills, we do the emergency savings, we make sure that that is where we need to be. We try to put some money to, towards our debt as much as possible. And then number four for us normally is we have a stash, we have a separate account that we put in um, vacation money. Right. And that's towards our next vacation. So now we do that weird because we do that two ways. We do that a certain amount that goes into the bank that we will use towards booking that vacation. Mm -hmm. And then the other way is we have, well, I don't want you to, don't, don't come rob us, all right? Mm -hmm. But in our bedroom, we have a jar that says vacation, vacation fund. fund. Right. And once we book a vacation, we put $20, $20 in there every Saturday. Every Saturday. Every Saturday. Choose a day of the week. Every Saturday, we put $20 in there each. So once we book our vacation, that money, we use when we go on vacation for cabs, stuff. right? Cabs, food, food, whatever shared, like right. whatever you need cash for. The food when you like, let's say we're going on a cruise. Let's say we want to have food when we go to an island because you want to try something local. We'll spend money. We'll have money there. I'm not a souvenir person, but if I see something I really like, I'll use that. That that so that's what that cash for. Right. Is. And we'll also have our own personal cash. But that's like the family fund cash right. for vacation. So we do that, and that's a big part of our vacation. We've been doing that for a long time. It really, really works, right? Right. So what about personal funds, um, Richard was saying is, Richard and I, we both have our own separate bank accounts, okay? It's very, but this, like I said, this is what works for us because all my life, like, I'm not gonna say all my life, but I have a family member who always was like on my back telling me, oh, you guys need 
a shared bank account. It's important for you to have a shared bank account. Like all, all your, your money, finances? everything. Like uh, both of our paychecks go into one one account. Oh, you mean like no personal account? Just no personal account. Straight shared. Straight shared. Or nothing. Or nothing. Because it's important for you guys to see where the money is going in and out. And, um, you know, but this is back, especially when we were saving for a house. Like, it's important. And, and I personally don't, me personally, I don't like having a shared, we do have shared accounts. But for like both of our paychecks to go into one account. Because it's like, at the end of the day, he's a human being, I'm a human being. He's going to make purchases. If I want to go out and buy a pair of shoes okay for myself or i do most of the shopping for the girls so if i want to go out and purchase something for the girls that he don't agree on i want him looking at the bills and be like oh what oh like that impulse right it's called impulse, impulse buy yeah. okay yes i'm a human being and i do that i love to shop clearly <laughs> and you but, know what i will say everybody deserves an impulse buy mm -hmm. no matter what it is it could be a guy that goes out and decides that he needs to buy like a, a, a way more expensive car wash mm -hmm. than you know just or may uh, or really expensive cologne mm -hmm. like a five hundred dollar bottle of cologne because he wants it and that's he just that's his impulse right. buy. Right, I'm like you cannot just like strangle yourself and not live your life. Like I personally feel like it's important for you to to get the things that you want. Now, it's not because I'm hiding something from Richard that I don't want, don't want him to see on the account. I just personally feel like you should have your own account, I should have my own account, and we have our savings together. Right. So all of these things that we save, that we're putting aside for, especially when we were saving for a house. Right. Like, we were putting we were putting a lot of money every paycheck. Like most of our paycheck we yeah. were saving. When we were saving up for a house, so. Yeah, um. so. Basically, the way we do it is we get paid, we pay off all our bills, we put a certain amount, amount towards vacation, and after that, it's our personal money. So you choose what you want to do after that. Right. And we, let's say, let's say I keep a hundred dollars to myself as personal money. Then, if I choose to go out and buy myself some Gucci shoes, then that's my problem. Jasmine won't be like. Where did you get the money from? You know, or something like right. that. Right. I mean, it's not a does. secret. I know how much money you make. You know how much money I make. I know that if you coming in the house with driving up with a damn Ferrari, <laughs> I that wasn't an impulse buy. <laughs> that wasn't an impulse buy because I know how much money you make every two weeks. Now, if I pull up in a Ferrari, that means I spent her money too. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know I'm exaggerating, but if my husband is buying me. A Louis bag every two every month. Something I mean, like that's right. something ain't right because we <laughs> can't afford a Louis bag every month. You know, so that's what we mean by that. We do, I do, we do have a shared document in which we know, which we know every time someone, you know, we log into the accounts and stuff, right? I'm gonna say some piece of that stuff. <laughs> Yo. Let me show y'all. You gotta go through every piece? I made this steak today. I don't know if you can see it. I I put the garlic into the steak before I cooked it. I hope you can see that. Oh can I can I? Can I taste that? Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> oh my god. That look real good. Real Amazing. Good. Real good. Amazing. Almost. What were we talking about? Because I'm thinking about the steak right now. The login. Oh, yeah. So, it's 2020. So, you're able to have a shared document on your phone that you can share with your partner or whoever you choose to. And I have all our login info to every single account that we own, including my own personal one. She can log in and check in on my account anytime. I can log in and check in on her account anytime when it comes to stock accounts, um, retirement accounts, life insurance, all those things. We have them in the shared account because if something happens to the other person, mm -hmm. we don't have to fish for the information or not. Knowing the passwords, or, yeah. Look. 
or not be able to have access to it. Mm -hmm. So we do that, and mm -hmm. we also have a book that we keep in our room Ooh, with everything so written down. Wasn't that good? That tastes so good. With the garlic in it? I think I'm gonna need another piece. Chip, Joe, whoa! I was easy. I didn't let my fishy hands touch it all. Mmm, so good. Yeah. So, so we do that. Well, let's talk about stocks. Okay, so a hot topic that when we do YouTube live, um, people want to know about stocks. So I wrote down some stuff. Give me a sec. And again, this is going to be very basic. If you already own stocks, this may be irrelevant to you, but I've noticed in our lives, in our mainly in our lives, people truly don't know how to invest in stocks and how to even start. Right. So, Especially a lot of people my age, our age. And yeah, people just don't know. They don't know. And that's fine. And it's a culture at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It's a cultural thing. We're not born knowing how to be financially savvy. Exactly. So. My parents did the best they could. Mm -hmm. I'm mine too, you know. Um, but if I ask my parents about stocks, I'm sure they wouldn't know about stocks. We spent a lot of time trying to educate ourselves on stuff that we don't know about because I, I feel like we need to know. I need to know because I want to, to be able to teach my daughters and I want my daughters to know better because if they have, if they know that from young, stuff that's not in the school, they can do better and they'll be ahead of the game. And in the part of town that we live in, we with a lot of people who their kids are ahead of the game, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Born ahead of game. So, my kids, I need them to be, to, they need to be able to compete. Mm -hmm. And I really believe that we can all make that choice and we can all make it happen. And maybe just you following us can help you to, to I hope I can push some people to, towards making that decision. So, for my people, um, with stocks, let's talk about stocks for a quick second. I'll even not eat to, because I, I really want to get this information across. So, the first thing is, how do you buy stocks, right? If you have no clue. So, with stocks, the first thing you need to look at is, what does your job offer you? So, maybe your job already offers you something, a 403B or 401K, something of that sort. Well, what, what do you have, babe? So for my job specifically, in most hospitals, you'll get a 403B. So And I ask you that, not to cut you off. I know the answers to this. I'm asking because you guys may not, you know, you want to be curious, you want to know. So that's why I'm asking him questions yeah. as he talks. And you need to keep doing that. So Go ahead. every paycheck, um, my job will give me 4%. They'll match me 4% if I put away 4%. So, of my income. So, I'm gonna put in 4% of my income. They're gonna match me 4% of my income. That's 8%. If I go up, I can make that 10%, whatever the case is. So you, that money's going somewhere. Vanguard, Fidelity, somewhere, right? And it's automatically getting taken out of your check. Right. You can do it pre-tax or post-tax, that's up to you. Sometimes the theory is if you if you do it pre-tax, then you don't pay for the tax later on, which may be more. Sometimes you just don't want to pay the taxes now. So either way, save something. If you have that option, then your money's going into some sort of mutual fund. It may be like a target retirement date fund. It'll be going into something. Mm -hmm. So you'll have some mutual funds there. If that's not the case for you, you can open up an IRA. It's an individual retirement account and you can buy mutual funds um, that can help you towards when it's time for you to retire. So the 401k, mm -hmm. the 503b, the IRA, you can't take that money out until you're 59 and a half years oh, old. Oh, okay. So by the time you're 59, you'll have a nice little penny. Right. That's, and that's the goal. So now, the now thing my is, job doesn't have that. There's a, there's a weird thing that's happening right now because the government as a part of the stimulus package is allowing you to take out that money out of your 401k without a fee. Normally they would take a lot of your money. Oh, so you can take money out today? You could take it out. Hmm. Yeah. What's if you the need penalty? To. 
There's no penalty. Oh. You would just pay taxes on it. Okay, so I can see that because some people are some losing people their job. Some people may lose their job, right. And how they paying their mortgage, how they right. paying their rent. So if you need to, then that's good. Mm -hmm. So now, just to touch on that real quick. That sauce is so good. So, <laughs> if you don't lose your job, don't touch your retirement plan. Leave it. The market is down, leave it. Don't sell your stock, don't do any of that. If you're down right now in the market, stay there and just let it recover. Give it time, it will recover in time. So, so that's that. So stocks, if you have your retirement account, um, with your job, that means you're putting away a certain amount every month. So see what that is and that'll probably be something very stable, right? If you don't have that, you can sign up for an account so you can invest. Mm -hmm. And the way you would start is very basic, basic funds. Okay. So the first thing is, I already know what you're going to ask. <laughs> How do you start? Where do you go? <laughs> right. right? <laughs> so traditionally they had apps that are really good for young people. Robin Hood and Stash and all of those and those work really well mm -hmm. but now because of them doing free trades the big companies Vanguard and Fidelity and stuff they now you can have a, a, a an account for free and trade for free so I would recommend that more than the apps nowadays because it just seems so much more solid and even for myself personally I used to invest in Robin Hood and now I invest on Fidelity. Mm -hmm. I also have Vanguard with my retirement accounts, but um, Fidelity is where I'd make my main investments. So, Fidelity.com, sign up for a brokerage account. When you buy stocks, it costs you nothing. I could tell you, just so you know, just a few years ago, just like last year, if you bought one share of um, something random, Carnival Cruise, this could be cruise a lot. Right. Um, you would pay whatever it costs for Carnival Cruise, and you would pay six ninety nine or six ninety five or whatever the case is. Six dollars and ninety five. Five dollars, six dollars. Yeah, as a trading, com like a fee. Okay. Nowadays, you can buy all you want for free. So, being that Carnival is so cheap. Uh huh. Right now. So right now, this is a complete gem. Carnival stock, Norwegian stock is both around $8, just to touch on a specific car. stock. Right. And they used to trade a few years ago at like $50 or $60. Oh, wow. So That's imagine, a huge drop. let's just say you got Carnival all, let's say you spent $1,000 on Carnival stock, right? $1,000. In one shit, in, in one sitting. Right. And let's say you got them all for ten dollars, which is it's even lower than that now. You got a thousand dollars. You got a hundred shares, right? Uh huh. If they go back up to fifty dollars, you have five thousand dollars now. There's no bank account in America that will make your money give you five hundred percent of what you put in. This is like this is a perfect example of why you should put money in the stock market. All right, Rich. Let's say all right. It's hard times right now. Uh huh. All I got is, um, let's say $100. Mm -hmm. All I have is like $100 to try to invest in stock. So, what I say is, you don't know where, you know, everybody's telling you like, including myself, buy stocks now because the market is, is low. You don't know where the bottom is. I don't know where the bottom is. You don't, no one can tell you where the bottom is. So what you do is, you buy a little bit at a time. Let's talk about Carnival Norwegian stock. Both are about $8 right now. For me personally, every time I get paid, I'm gonna buy at least 10, 10, 10 shares. shares. So you're talking about about $80, maybe next week it'll be $70, maybe it'll be $90, it depends. And, and once you get 100 shares on Carnival, you get like a, like an incentive, right? So that's a hidden gem that a lot of people don't know about and this, is better than any stock advice you could get if you're a cruiser. If you own 100 shares of Carnival, Norwegian, Royal Caribbean, every time you get on that cruise, you can get onboard spending credit. Like one to six nights or something like $50. 
seven to 14 nights is something like a hundred dollars. Oh. And then it goes up over 14 is like And this is on top of the stuff that I would normally Whatever get. Whatever promotion, yep. Oh, wow. Free onboard spending credits for being a shareholder. Now, the only thing is. How do they know that though? How do they know that on the website? Like, when So I'm you would print that out? You would, you would get some proof mm -hmm. showing that you own these shares. Mm -hmm. And you would get that to your travel agent. Who would get that to the to the company? Oh, so I have to like call the company and do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you have a piece of corn? So good. Please have one. It tastes better. Mm, no, yeah, pass me one. It tastes better than the corn that I made the other night. I mean, it was so good. It just wasn't amazing. I mean, you really like played that corn the other night. <laughs> so, so that's a really big secret. Let's put it Own in a hundred Let shares. It Let it marinate. A hundred shares of all those stock. Okay. Now that could go away for a little bit because the cruise lines are suffering. And they have more suffering to come. So. Damn. No, I mean, truthfully, people <laughs> no. are not cruising. Yeah, it's, it's going to be a while before these cruises start. They even put like, like they said that when the ships start running back again, they're putting, they're suspending some of the ship service mm -hmm. because they don't expect the same amount of people to be booking cruises like they used to. Yeah, so I know Carnival has suspended two of their ships like till like November because they're just like, we don't need this many ships on the water because we're losing big time. So the cruise lines, I wrote down a few of them here. Carnival Cruise is not sailing till May 10th. Celebrity Cruise not till May 12th. Disney does not sail until April 28th. MSC May 29th, Norwegian May 11th, Royal Caribbean May 12th, Virgin Voyages not till August 7th. So those dates are, when they say subject to change, they mean it. Right. If there's no cure for this virus, those dates will be pushed. Right, definitely pushed back. So more advice. If we talked about this on our live last night, if you have a cruise booked, don't cancel it. Don't get worried and cancel it. Let the cruise line cancel you and you'll you'll really win because they'll give you something like Carnival will give you like 100%. 300 onboard spending credit plus the cruise credit towards another one. Mm -hmm. Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, they give you, I believe it's 125% of mm -hmm. what you paid. So mm -hmm. if you paid a thousand, they'll give you a thousand two hundred and fifty towards your next cruise plus maybe onboard spending credit. Right. Virgin Voyages will give you 200%. If you paid $1,000, they'll give you $2,000 towards your next cruise, plus onboard spending credit. Right. They have the best deal in town. That's why I mentioned them. And they haven't even started cruising yet. Right, yeah. They, they've, they're just the most generous. So, back to stocks. Um, what I would say is, don't go crazy thinking you're gonna be like um, the Wolf of Wall Street, <laughs> and you're just gonna be, you know, killing it in the in the, in the stock market. Mm -hmm. That was a good movie. If you don't have the patience to watch the market all day, and watch the news and read up on the companies, don't day trade. What you need to do, invest long term. Who do you invest for long term? Think about what what's gonna be here. Who's 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 the number one winner? What am I using right now? iPhone. I have a iWatch on. Apple? Apple's not going nowhere. Disney's not going nowhere. Disney's not going nowhere. So, place of things, Disney, Apple, Microsoft, um, Amazon. Amazon's going to take going over the world. Right. So, even in a recession, how do you get your groceries? You can get it delivered. Amazon. You How are you getting all your stuff you need? Amazon. Your state is on lockdown. Amazon. So, if you sign up like Fidelity, I can tell you Fidelity.com, you sign up with them. Their Amazon shares used to be like $2,000 a share. You're not gonna invest $2,000 right away unless you got $2,000, right? Let's say you only wanted, you said you wanted to do $100. Every time you get paid, you can take $100 and put it towards, let's just say you believe Amazon is it, or Apple, right? Those are, those are probably my two top picks anyway. Amazon, or um, Apple, every time you get paid, you can put $50 and own a partial amount of that share. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know much about stocks. I'm learning by Richard. I'm, I'm, I'm very fortunate enough to have a, a husband. I was a man. <laughs> <laughs> very fortunate enough to have a husband who educates himself and learns 
all things about finances and stocks and stuff because it's just some it's not something that I'm really interested in. But because I have a husband that that educates himself and that works hard at making better financial decisions not only for himself but for us as a family and for our girls, I'm very very thankful for that. I'm very very appreciative of that because I would be kind of lost in the sauce. <laughs> with things you know because you can't just think like I said before making money through your job and getting that check every two weeks is going to be the end all say all because you missing out on other venues and channels of how you can make money mm -hmm. you know and obviously money make the world go round you want it you want to see how are there legal ways of how else I can make money you know people do it I mean people do it People start investing and saving in the retirement accounts in their 20s and 30s. And by the time they retire, they're a millionaire. Yeah. It's very, very doable. The stock market can generate so much wealth. And you will never get that wealth under your mattress and in your saving account. Right. Think about it. If you got $1,000 in your saving account at the end of the month, you see what the bank gives you. Three cents. <laughs> what are you going to do with three cents? <laughs> you can't buy anything for three cents. So that's an example, you know, of where money grows. And under your mattress, zero. Right. So, all right, so, I personally, I don't get paid from them. I personally would recommend you do Fidelity. It's very user friendly. You can run multiple accounts on there. A retirement account, a broker, a brokerage account is what you need to invest in stocks. It's free to sign up. To transfer your money in, it's free to buy these stocks. If you want to buy individual stocks, like we said, Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Disney, those are everyday stuff that we believe in mm -hmm. because we don't see them failing. And really they're, they're kind of like, like Amazon is and Apple, they're right now, they're recession proof. You know, they, they can't lose. So let's talk about, you done with the socks? That's, I mean, yeah, that's, that's as basic as I can get. Okay. I think that was pretty, pretty insightful. Hopefully that you guys got a little tips from that. Um. Let's talk about the don'ts. We talked about the do's. What shouldn't you do as a young, everyday working person? If you're young, what, what can should I, you do? Can I start with the, what you should not do? Which I, okay, you can tell me if I'm wrong, but just off the top of my head, you should not be signing up for those store credit cards. Is that, am I right? No, that's, that's not right. Because you need credit. In America, you need credit. Yeah, you need the credit, correct. And if the only way you can get a credit line is to first get a store credit card, is then you need to get it. It's fine. But don't, if Macy's tells you you can spend $3,000, you shouldn't have $2,500 as what you've already, as your balance. Right. You need to keep that, let, always average out, let's say 10%. Mm -hmm. Macy's tells you $3,000, don't let that go over $300. That's it? Yeah. Mm. You can go over that. You can spend over that, but pay it off and keep the balance at mm. that 10%. Okay. So there goes a misconception right there. Richard just answered. I said, don't get a store credit card. He says that you need it because you need to build credit. Yeah. All right. Let's say I can't get a credit card, Richard. No place is approving me for a credit card. How am I ever going to build credit if nobody's giving me a shot? What should so I do? So you can get, um, basically you've, you've heard of those, um, prepaid cards, right? So the ones that you can give to your kids to build credit, or if you have really bad credit, you can, um, you basically get a prepaid one where you load the money up $500 and that's how you'll slowly build your, your, your credit. Oh, so that's one way. There's another hack where you can get a fit. If you know a friend or family who has really good credit, mm -hmm. they can add you to their credit card. Mm -hmm. And you, once they add you, your social, this, that, you should eventually be able to get their whole credit history on that credit card. Oh, wow. 
Yeah. So that could really boost you and that I may boost you enough to get your own credit card and then you could kind of build from there. You should have at least- I mean, but is that a fact? Okay, so I'm gonna go ask somebody. I'm talking hypothetically. I'm gonna ask my sister, oh girl, you got good credit. and I don't have no credit at all. Can I be on your credit card line? Well, she's gonna be like, no, you ain't messing up my credit. Most people will say no. And most times it's not a good decision because it's not something you can really trust people with, you know? Right, that's the number one thing. People right. will mess up your credit. Mm -hmm. So as much as that sounds good, a lot of people ain't gonna do that. So here's what I would do. Let's say my friend hit me up. Yo, I need to, I need to boost my credit, da da da. I'll add him to my credit card. They'll send the credit card in the mail. He gave me that credit card and I kept the credit card myself. And I, you know, of course I continue to pay that credit card and everything else. He never got the credit card to spend anything. So his credit rating is gonna show all of my history. But he actually never had access to the, to, to the card. To go spend money. So he could never spend money, so he could never screw me. But he got what he needed, which is a better credit score and a better credit line. Oh, and then, and then I can go out and get my own credit card that I actually could possess in my hands mm -hmm. to make that purchase right. for them new Jordans that just came out. I don't know. New <laughs> Jordans? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just talking hypothetically, but no, to build your credit so that yes, you can buy, purchase your own home or you know get your business that mm -hmm. you want to open up. Okay, yes, alrighty. Another thing. So Richard, my best friend, she got terrible credit and she really need this car. She asked me to co-sign on this car for her. Whew. Should I do it? No. Why not? If you think that this person is gonna really hold you down then I can understand why the need but you'll, you'll fall out of friends with that <laughs> definitely do not do that do not co-sign with nobody unless you're married to them truly and honestly I can't even tell you to do it with your own sibling you gotta be very careful I've done it guys I've done it and it's been successful I can tell you, I've done it for, for things that I should not have done. And so you have big regrets on some? I've had regrets and I've also had some people that did what they had to do. And now, now they're in a better place. Okay. Because I, and, and I know they'll never forget that, that I helped them out. It just depends on the situation. But in the, the same advice from an advisor would tell you, just don't do it. I'm about to say, so Rainy Royce gonna tell you, Daddy, I wanna help out my friend. And hell he no. gonna, he's gonna say hell no. Okay. Moving on. <laughs> what else should you do not do? I can't think of anything on top of my head. What else? Now if your credit is bad, you can also get that repaired. You can pay for a an a agency to have up your credit repaired and the the bad things taken out Ooh. and whatnot. Uh-huh. And I feel like I don't know, I thought that that was almost like a very known thing, but it seems like it's not. I mean, I used a company called years ago. I forgot if it's Sky Blue or Blue Sky. Mm -hmm. You could look it up. Just type them in, in in Google and put credit repair, it'll come up. And I had one thing that was negative on there and they were able to get it removed. And because of that, like my credit is solid. Me and Jasmine, our credit is solid. Mm -hmm. We're not gonna brag on what our credit score is, but we could go out and make a purchase on anything tomorrow. Our credit is solid. Right. Uh -huh. and, I, and, I thank, and I thank Richard for that. You know what I'm saying? Because if it wasn't for him, you know, I wouldn't be able, I would really not take my credit that seriously. So I, I feel think, like people don't realize how serious it is yeah. until it's time to like and buy, time a house, house, buy a house yeah. or buy a car. And you sitting up there looking like a, like a fool because you don't have a good credit score. And it's very important for you to improve your So especially if we do have, I know most of our audience is an older crowd, but if we do have people that are younger, in their early 20s, in their late teens, it's yeah, very- If you're young, you need good credit because it's everything, right? It's everything. It is. And even after you buy a house, you may want to take an investment on something a personal loan or anything, and you just don't know that a you'll need loan. that good. Mm -hmm. Right. Another important thing that we didn't talk about, and I noticed that you wrote it down, 
is life insurance. Mm -hmm. um, life insurance, you need to be able to have your spouse sustain life as if you were still there. That's the goal. It's mm -hmm. worth paying it every month. Mm -hmm. You know, we both have life insurance on each other. Um, I even have like the one with my job, uh, accidental death, where if something happens to me at the job, they'll cover me a certain amount. And then I have the supplemental one. You can do the whole life or you can do the term yeah. life, but ultimately I'm not going to break it all down. Get something. Um, get something so that you can leave your family with something. You mm -hmm. should not have be having your family setting up GoFundMes because of, you know, and don't get me wrong, GoFundMes are great. I see a lot of people do that, but it's very That's important. okay to like bury you maybe, but, right, but what about it, your family living for yeah. the next year? For the rest of, I'm not gonna say for the rest of your life, for the next couple of years. You know, what, what are they gonna do next? Right. You know what I'm saying? So, it's important for you to have life insurance. To keep it basic, um, I'll say like, in our house, we know we both have student loans, we have some credit card, we have the car note, we have the house, right? So we calculate, what, how much do we need to cover all these bills for not, five months, six months, one year. How can we calculate covering these bills for the next few years, like five years plus? And that's what we've had to get in, in life right. insurance. God forbid something happens to me, something happens to Richard. I don't want I don't want it to be where, oh my God, I gotta sell my house next month. I'm not gonna be able to pay for this house. And you know I can what tell saying? you what, what bothered me was when Jasmine had said to me in the past, oh, if something happened to you, I could never afford to live here in this house on a teacher's salary. And I'm like, no, that's not, that's not right. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't like the way that even sounds. Mm -hmm. So you know what? We've set things up where if something happened to me, she can stay in this house for the next five, 10 years. Yeah. And the kids, and just carry on financially as usual. Right. You know, because that's, that's what you want for your family. And, don't wait till you're sick and, and something is happening. Yeah, to get to your life decision. insurance while you're young. Just do and it. And healthy. Get it. I mean, I'll be I'll be blunt. How much do I pay about less than fifty dollars a mm -hmm. month for life insurance. Yeah, I pay so, about fifty, forty seven. Yeah, it? I, I pay about forty seven, forty eight dollars a month. So if forty seven, forty eight dollars to you, I mean, everybody has going to have a different amount. You know what I'm saying? Depending on your age, depending on how much your life insurance is, everybody has a different amount. But let's say forty seven, like your number is. If that's, it's it's hurting you. It's gonna. If that forty seven, forty eight dollars is hurting you every month, think about how bad it's gonna hurt your family. God forbid you. Do I can tell you what to check, because I know it's gonna be a question. Um, Susie Orman recommends um, select quote. Select quote? Yeah, select quote. And they will compare multiple agencies yeah, that's and get what you I the went best through. price. That's what I went through to select get my quote. life insurance. There's another one which is. Oh, I didn't save it. It's like best. Best though? But select quote is is extremely solid. They'll mm -hmm. That's they'll what shop I went around through. and they'll find you the best deal. Yeah, and I got my life insurance basically when when I was I think when I was pregnant. Yeah, when I was pregnant with Rain. So I I kind of I wouldn't say I got it late in the game, but I was 27, 26 going on 27. So we just didn't feel the need until we had kids. To be honest. Mhm. Mm but what if you don't have kids? Do you think you should still get it? I think you should. We I should, think everybody should. You should, should at least get a low amount, but right. You know the thing is, if you're young and you don't have kids and you're watching this, go ahead and get it and get the longer term you can. Because let's say you sign up at 25 years old for a 40 year policy, 30 year policy. In your policy, you will be 25 years old mm -hmm. for the whole 30 years, 40 years, or a whole life policy, whichever policy you sign up for. So that's why it's important to get it as early as possible because one day. You know, you will have kids and, and, and a family and everything else, and then you'll definitely be happy you signed up for it early. Right. And you can also take out life insurance on your children, too. Mm -hmm. Some people do that. So um, some people don't like, they feel like it's like gore. I don't want to say gory, but like, what, what's the word I'm looking for? People say it's like a, um, like a blight or a, um, like a curse. Yeah, like a curse. 
Um, I personally don't believe that it's a curse. I think it's just, you cannot, me personally, I feel like I can't depend on no one out there financially but me and my husband. You know what I'm saying? That's God forbid, you know, something happens. I know that we are covered. You know what I'm saying? So yes, you can also, and then even if you take a life insurance policy out on your children, the amount is so low. It's like $2 a month. Mm -hmm. It's literally like $2 a month that you're paying. So um, $2 a month, that's at obviously nothing. A dollar each paycheck. So you can do that as well for your children. Because today, let's be, let's be real. Death has no age. It does not, it affects people of all ages. So you have to be realistic and don't think of it as you're cursing your kids because you're putting out, taking out a life insurance policy. I, per, I personally believe that. You may disagree with me, but. And you know what I say? If you pay $5 a month and your kids turn out to be 50, 80, 90, 150 years old, it's the best money you ever lost. Mm-hmm. True. Sure. I'm happy to lose that money. Right. I am. So, exactly. I want to lose that money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I want to lose that money. But, like I said, it's $2. Two, $3 every month. So. Um, all right. I think we covered all the basics. I think we covered yeah. all the basics. Let's talk about something more positive and upbeat. And let's wrap this up. Because I don't want to just leave on that downer. It's kind of a downer. Yeah, that, that was yeah. a downer. Um, so, uh, yeah. I can tell you a positive note. Just tomahawk rib I mean, he tore that up, okay? He tore that up. I am stuffed. I will oh be eating God. the rest of this for tomorrow. For I lunch. I thought I was going to have steak and eggs tomorrow, but that's not <laughs> um, Yeah, we enjoyed this meal. Shout out to Ms. Habibi Love Life for your delicious smack delicious sauce. And if you guys have not tried it out, try it out. You get, you can purchase it on Amazon. That's the only place that you can purchase her, her smack delicious sauce. She has an Amazon stock is winning. Yeah, right, exactly. That's the only place you can purchase Miss B Love's live smack delicious sauce. Um, but back to finances. I hope that we covered um, a lot of topics. We, I hope that it wasn't boring to you. I hope that, yes, finances can be boring. Let's be real. I'm not the type of person that sits back and think about finances all day. Like, you know, it's just not something. Richard always has money on his mind. So he's always researching. <laughs> he, he does. He always is researching, Jabin trying knows. to find something. You know, and me, I'm just, you know, I, I, I'm taking care of the household. I'm taking care of the girls. You know, I'm not saying he just sits there and does finances all day. But I'll be thinking about it. But he, it's definitely on his mind all the time. <laughs> and we hope that you gave you, we gave you guys some, some important information that can help jumpstart your, your want and your need to do better with your finances in life because. It's important. Oh, that's something I'm talking about. Hold on. We still have a question? Yeah. I'm sorry. So, I, f I forgot to mention this, and I said it was going to be very important in my vlog. On Fidelity, or Vanguard, or other places, but I, you know, I recommend Fidelity because I use it and it's very easy. Mm -hmm. You can open up a br custodial broker account for your kids. Oh, yes. Rain and Royce, I initially had um, college saving accounts for them, mm -hmm. but now I feel like mm, college may be free when they're older. I'm not sure, but that regardless, would be nice. I mean, no, we hope, right? Mm -hmm. But um, you can open up a custodial broker account, and basically, it's a stock account that you can manage for them until they're 18. So there's two ways to play that. One, they know about it and they participate and they, they help you invest in their own money when, they, when they're a little bit older. They don't really know now mm -hmm. at two and four. But the other way is you just never tell them. And then when they're 18, it's theirs. But if they don't know right away, they're obviously not going to take it and spend all the money. Um, but, you know, it may really give them a head start. And some people and cultures have that head start that our people and culture don't have. And I think that we need to get that going. I could tell you when all friends and family send money for Rain and Royce, they just had, Rain just had her birthday, right? And Rain collected um, some cash. And what I did is I put all that money into her account 
And because the, the stock market is slowly dropping, I can tell you what I invested in for her is something she absolutely loves. Disney. Mm -hmm. Rain and Royce, they both, what I try to purchase for them <laughs> is Disney stocks. Yeah. Because I feel like when they're older, first, Disney's not going nowhere. And as they're older, Disney's just gonna grow and their money will grow. Yeah. So, Brain and Royce, that's what I try to invest for them now. And, you know, for now, I do the investing for them. But when they get to a certain age, I want to teach them about the stock market and I want them to make a decision on when you get $100 from Auntie on your birthday, what stock are you gonna buy? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's. that's yeah. I can't even imagine if I did that when I was young. Right, I'd exactly be rich. how much money you would have. Yeah. Instead of, oh, I'm gonna take this hundred dollars and buy a pair of Jordans, and which is fine because you know you're we a kid. We try to balance that. You know, yeah. we try to balance that. As you can see, I try to keep my kids, you know, nice, well dressed, and stuff. Not saying that Jordans is number one priority. If they're wearing Walmart sneakers, that's fine. Yeah. But at the same time. You know what I'm saying? That can't be your number one priority, being the freshest in class and and not having no money in the bank or, mm -hmm. or investing. Yeah. So, and it's not something that they necessarily know any, well, they don't have a clue about, but I want to get them involved in it. I want them to know about it. And, and I want to give them that heads up, you know? I wish that I could have had a stock account when I was buying my first home to be like, you know what, Jasmine, I'm just gonna cash out a little money from my stock account. Right. And buy my first home. But <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> right. But you know, Rain and Roy's they're they're gonna be they're gonna be ahead of the game. And we can all do that for our children, our grandchildren. Right. That's that's the way that really right. works. Right, so it's a win win. It's a win win. You know, they don't understand the second part of it of stocks, obviously right now, but later on down the line. I hope that they understand and know that mommy and daddy is trying to just make a better um, better financial decisions for you guys, for your future. So yeah, do that. Do that for your kids. I think it's such a long-term play and it can be such a blessing in the future. Right. I, I meant that to be like the biggest part of my vlog actually. That's my, to me, everything I said tonight, that's like my number one takeaway, I think. Mm hmm I agree. Setting up the future for your children. Absolutely, do it. Start now. Start today. Start with even a lo as low as a hundred dollars, fifty dollars. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Start it, it. You and you know it's never too late. <laughs> it's never too late to start doing better for your finances. So if you guys have any questions, like we said before, we are not experts on this financial business. But as you can see, Richard has educated himself a lot. And if you don't agree with some of his things, don't be writing down in the comments, oh no, absolutely, how could dare you? Listen, know-it-alls. We are not know-it-alls, and neither are you. So, <laughs> so if you don't agree with some of the things he said, that's why we kept that's it very fine. basic. We kept it very basic. You know what I'm saying? You going to spend your money the way you decide to spend your money. You going to spend your coins the way you decide to spend your coins. This was just for us to give you guys some finance advice based off what we do and what works for us. Because a lot of people have been asking and how you should save for vacation and how you should start socks and what you do for your children and life and insurance base, and credit cards and all that. This information is for people who really just don't know and wanted some advice. You may know better than me. And if you do, that's great. And if you want to leave me a comment on giving me some advice, I'm definitely open to it. Right. If you guys can think of any other financial basic advice, just basic advice that you think that we didn't touch on, leave it in the comments below. People like to read the comments. People want help. So this is free advice. We're all here to help each other. Okay, I'm not, we're not trying to make ourselves better than anyone else because we are still learning as well as you mm -hmm. can see. Definitely. So, else um, we would already not be working. <laughs> exactly. We are learning as we're going along to make financial decisions better for ourselves and for our girls so that we can prosper and go far in life. Well, I mean, Rich and I, we are truly blessed to be able to, per I was truly blessed to be able to purchase a home before I turned 30 years old. That's a huge blessing on its own. You know what I'm saying? I would not be able to do that without the thanks and having a smart husband like I do. So I'm very, very grateful for him. 
I mean, that was your money too. <laughs> I mean, right. I mean, I'm very, no, I'm yeah. saying I'm grateful for you because, not because of money wise, because you showed me how to save my money. You know what I'm yeah. saying? You show me how to save my money instead of going out and keep purchasing bags and shoes, which I still... Bags and shoes are nice. I but, mean, bags and shoes are nice. I still yeah. have nice bags and shoes and I still have nice sunglasses <laughs> and clothes and stuff like that. I but found a, a way. That I, exactly. I found a way to balance it. I found a way to still get my shoes, still get my... But I'm going to tell you, I'm clearance queen, honey. I don't buy nothing regular price. Nothing. Now, that's, that's financial that's, advice. Let, here is the biggest takeaway from Jazzy. Everything in the front of the store goes to the back of the store. She been saying do not, that ever. She do believes not it. buy anything regular price unless it's an absolute dire emergency. That dress that you see in the front of the store for a hundred dollars, girl, it's gonna be nineteen ninety nine real soon. Real soon. So please take your time. Nineteen ninety nine. Yes, nineteen ninety nine. Okay, I've got. I, I'm a sale queen. I don't think no. I, let me tell you, I am a clearance queen, and, and I dress nice. So I am getting my stuff on sale, darling. Even the girls' clothes. I get all the girls' clothes so cheap. So cheap. So um, maybe I'll do that one day. Make a vlog whenever the world opens back up with me like shopping for them clothes. Yeah, they shop. really liked the uh, kid to kid. Was it kid yeah, to kid? the kid to kid. But I can show once them upon how. A child. One, no, that yeah, I was once upon a child. Yeah. But I can show you how to go into like like a children's place or a regular store. What would you buy? Shopping what would with I buy? Me. And like, let's say. Richard, we'll do it like Richard gives me forty dollars. How much stuff can I walk out the store for? Why well, I gotta give you forty dollars? Uh, you know what I'm saying. She said she got her own. How much stuff I gotta give for? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like I, I'm, I've always been really, really good at that. Ever since she I was has. a little, she has. ever since I was a little girl, I'm very good at like even making some of my dress clothes. Shirt. She just wait till you see some of the stuff she got me on clearance. Suit jackets, great hot fire. Under $150, I got you about two full suits, mm -hmm. two full suits, and a vest and pants suit. Like three different. Good quality stuff, too. Wait till you guys see it. I'm not gonna tell you what it is because it'll be coming up on the vlogs. I don't want you to know that I got it on sale. Yeah, <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> but she got me some hot fire. Yes, for I, real. right. I'm, I'm really good at that. So that's probably like, you know, because I'm all into shopping. So that's, that's what gets me, excites me. So the camera battery is dying. And, um,. So yeah, that's it. That's it. We hope you guys enjoyed this. We hope we didn't bore you. We hope that you enjoyed the finance talk. And um, I know I enjoyed my meal. Yeah, I enjoyed my meal too. Ooh. It was delicious. I'm gonna wrap this up for tomorrow. All right, guys. Well, until the next vlog, continue to live. All right. And jazzy live. Bye. Bye.